Sierra, and I absolutely love the quilting space on the Baby Lock Jazz. Combine that with an extension table and I have the perfect place for working with the brand new open toe ruler foot. This particular machine happens to be a low shank machine, so I'm using the low shank foot, and I've attached it to my machine. You have to take the ankle off, and it screws right on. Now, it is kind of an adjustable piece, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Once you've got the foot screwed into place, you can open up the ruler set as well, and there are several different types of rulers, and the first thing that you have to do when you open them up is they all come with white paper backing on them. So the first thing you're going to do is peel off the paper backing. Now, these rulers come in a low shank and a high shank format, and you want to make sure that if you have a low shank machine like the Jazz that you get the low shank rulers as well. These are 3 16 of an inch thick, so they are a little thicker than a standard ruler. We don't use a plain rotary cutting ruler for free motion quilting. We want to make sure that we use a designated ruler work ruler. I've also added the sew slip to my machine. This has a little grip on the underside. It sticks right to the bed of the machine and it's very, very smooth so that I can easily run my fabric underneath of the presser foot. Now I'll place my quilt sandwich under here and what we're looking for is we want to make sure that our foot hovers just above the fabric. The foot itself does have a slot on the side and you can kind of adjust the height of the foot. Usually about halfway up that slot is where you want to be for a standard quilt sandwich. I'm going to bring mine down just a little bit. But it's nice that it's adjustable because you can work with really thick battings or thinner battings and have perfect free motion results. Once you place your fabric under the foot, you want to make sure you lower the foot and just make sure that you can push the fabric under the foot. See how mine's hanging up a little bit? That tells me that my foot is down just a little bit too low. So I'm just going to loosen that up, screw with my screwdriver, move the foot a little bit, and now I can freely move the fabric under the presser foot. That's really important. So bring your bobbin thread up to the top by turning the hand wheel toward you. Drop that needle down once and bring it back up again and then you can just kind of floss your needle thread under the foot and grab your bobbin thread. There we go and then we won't have to worry about any little knots or thread tangles on the underside of the fabric. Now we're ready for our rulers. Now when you use the rulers, you want to make sure that you apply some of the little grippy dots that come with the rulers to the back side. They just give it a little bit of grip because these rulers slip around on the fabric. That's going to help you to hold your ruler in place as you stitch because sometimes they slide. Next you want to make sure that you put on a pair of quilting gloves. These are machingers and what I love about these is they've got little grippy fingertips and that helps me to hold on to the ruler and the fabrics as I stitch without causing so much neck and shoulder strain by the time I'm done quilting. Now that I've got everything all set up to go, I'm going to take my little snail ruler here and show you some fun things we can do with it. Take a few stitches in place just to lock your stitches and then you can trim your threads out of the way. I'm going to trim mine in just a moment and then just follow inside the ruler. Alright, so I'm right back to my start place and now I'm just going to rotate the ruler around in a different direction and then follow again. So now I've got two little vines. Let's add a third one. You can rotate the ruler, and I'm just making sure that the ruler is not going to be over top of any of my previous rows of stitching. And keep in mind, your needle stitch is about a quarter of an inch inside of the edge of the ruler. One fourth and final swirl. There we go. So I'm back to the center and now if I want to continue moving around my fabric, I can simply follow right up the line on one of my swirls to the next place that I want to start 
and then reintroduce the ruler. And we can add another swirl. And then you, you really can com play with combining your ruler work and your free motion. Add some of your favorite motifs in around what you've already stitched. And it's a real easy way to move to a different portion of your fabric or to add a little secondary design around what you've already created. So this is just one of the many, many designs you can create using the ruler set for your baby lock jazz. Inside the owner's manual, you'll find that there are great pictures and how to's on how you can use a lot of the other templates to create some beautiful motifs. And sometimes when you start with something pretty simple, even a straight line, you can turn it into a lot of other fun things like stars. You can use the curved rulers to create freeform quilting, scallops, clamshells, all kinds of fun stuff. And the circles work great for concentric circles or even a freeform style of concentric circles. For a more in-depth look at the Baby Lock Open Toe Ruler Foot and Ruler Set, be sure to watch the video at sewathomeclasses.com. And to pick one up for yourself, visit your local authorized Baby Lock retailer.